Let's say, uh, let's, do a, let's do an English problem in English units. So here's my example. Let's say Jordy's down here. And he's at a depth of, I don't know, 70 feet of water. And I'll say h equals 70 feet. Since I got a variable here, I don't have to put it again in my knowns and unknowns. And it's H2O. We'll say it's pure H2O. And I want to know A. What's the pressure difference or the gauge pressure due to the water on top of Jordy? He's 70 feet down. Well, the pressure difference, the gauge pressure, is equal to the weight density of the water times the height. Now, the weight density of pure water is 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. And we're at a depth, H, of 70 feet. Remember, the units are just as important as the numbers. So I've got a foot canceling here. I'll have feet squared on the bottom. I'll have pounds per square foot. Well, that's great. That's what we'd expect. Now, 62.4 times 70, it's going to be about 4,200 pounds per square foot. Let's check that out. 62.4. Four thousand, uh, four thousand three hundred sixty-eight. About four thousand three hundred and seventy, and that's going to be pounds per square foot. That's his gauge pressure. Now for B, let's find out what his absolute pressure is. So let's. You recall, I hope you recall, because we talked about it three minutes ago, that absolute pressure is atmospheric pressure plus gauge pressure. I told you the atmospheric pressure is 14.7 pounds per square inch. I got pounds per square foot, 4370. I've got to have apples and apples. I've got to get them in the same units. I can look it up in the back of the book, because there's a value for atmospheric pressure. But I thought it would be a good idea if I did a calculation, the conversion, just so you can see it and so we can practice the conversion. So B, my next question is, what's the absolute pressure? Hmm. Well, first let's convert the atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure is 14.7 pounds per square inch. Now I need pounds per square foot. So, I need inches to cancel, so I'll put inches on top, feet on bottom. And let's see, there are 12 inches in a foot. That tells me what numbers to put in. Now, I've got inches squared over here, and only inches up here, so only one of these inches is going to disappear on the bottom. I've got to do this again. I've got to multiply by 12 inches per foot one more time. That cancels them. Now I've got pounds per foot per foot. Pounds per foot squared. I can add that. Let's see. As soon as I calculate it, 14.7 divided by 12 divided by, let's see, times 12 times 12. So I've got, now remember this, the units will tell you whether you've got to multiply or divide by 12. That's key. Make sure you use these units. Don't use diagonals. Make horizontal lines. That way you know what's on top, what's on bottom. Makes it a lot easier to do the calculation. So, 14.7, 12 times, 12 times, that gives me 2,117 pounds per square foot. That took a bit of time, and you know, there might be a tendency to circle this and say I got the answer. That's why it's important to remember 
to write down the unknown. Right up here, I've got P absolute is question mark. That tells me uh, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the absolute pressure. So I'll put in the equation for absolute pressure. Absolute pressure is atmospheric pressure plus the gauge pressure. And that gauge pressure, that's the same as delta P, the change in pressure. So I've got 2,117 pounds per square foot plus 4,370 pounds per square foot. The, the depth, the pressure due to being in 70 feet of water. 4,370 pounds per square foot. And that's going to give me, just keep, oh, let's see, keep going over here. There we go, that's nice. That's going to be equal to 6,487. So about 6,490. 6,490 pounds per square foot. I'll circle that. That's my absolute pressure. My gauge pressure is 4,370 pounds per square foot. Uh, that's due to being underwater. But there's air on top of that. 2,117 pounds per square foot worth. I add them together, I get the total absolute pressure, 6,490 pounds per square foot. Now, there's another way to measure pressure. We measure pressure also in uh, units called uh, units of inches of mercury, you may have heard of that, or millibars, or centimeters of mercury, or inches of water, centimeters of water, feet of water, and eh, those are units of height. Let me show you why. In the lab, we use something called a U-tubeometer. And it's a piece of glass, and it's very nice. It's got, uh, it's got some numbers by it, it's easy measurement. But essentially what it is, it's a U-tube of water. I've just put some coloring in this water so you can see it. But notice that if I move the tube up, I move the tube down, that the height of the water is the same. So the way a manometer works, it measures the difference between the atmosphere, I'll call this side atmosphere, and, and the test section. And this will be the test section. If I remove some air, well actually if I add some air to the test section, remember both sides, well I didn't tell you this, but both sides have air pushing down on them. So they are subject to one atmosphere of air pressure right now. I'm going to push a little bit harder on this side. OK, so you can see now, I've got a little, little ah. Sorry, I'll try it again. I've got a little bit lower pressure on the test section side now, or higher pressure, excuse me. I put more air in there. There are more molecules pushing against the water on the left-hand side, your left-hand side, than there are on the right-hand side. So I've got enough pressure in there to push a certain height of water, and it raises it a certain amount. So let me just grab a meter stick here, and we'll look at it, and notice I can I can move this up and down, it's still going to give me the same height because the right side is open to air, the atmosphere. So I've got about, I've got about 68, well let's see, I'll do it in, yeah, 68 centimeters, 68 centimeters of water, so let's see, 680 millimeters of water. So I've added enough pressure on the test side, the left side there, to raise, to raise up 680 millimeters of water. That's the height difference there. So let's see what kind of pressure difference that is. Let this go.